Hi, this is Karen Alari. Welcome to a step-by-step -step acrylic landscape called the Red Tree. I'm going to start out by showing you my brushes and I have a list of them there on the screen for you. This is the same image that we've been working on in the past two videos, um, choosing the image and transferring the image to the canvas and now we're going to get ready to paint it. And here, here's my layout of paints as they were listed um, on the screen. This is my water, my brush uh, container, just has water in it, and a small spray mister bottle, which is very handy when you're working with acrylics because they do dry out. When I'm working with a physical reference photo like I am today, I will put it in these little plastic crystal bags that I actually use to sell prints in, but um, putting a plastic, you could use a Ziploc bag, putting it inside plastic keeps you from putting water on, on the photo and have it starting to run, which is not very useful. And also, as I showed you in the prior video, you can draw lines on it to help you with your drawing. This time I'm using a star grid to help me uh, with my drawing, and you can see I've drawn it in pencil onto my canvas. This is a 9 by 12 canvas and I'm using an 8 by 10 photo so it's not the exact same proportions but when you use a star grid that's not as critical because you just go from corner to corner and, and uh, you can get your reference points by doing that. So as you can see I've started the drawing and I'm just using a little bit of ultramarine blue to draw in just something that I can see. Well, this will all be painted over completely later. I'm using, I'm looking at my reference photo, which you can see is propped up in front of me, and comparing um, angles, comparing sizes, looking at my little grid. Here's the center, and how far is the edge of this bush from the center? So drawing is really just a process of comparing one, one point to another point um, on your reference photo where the edge of the road meets the edge of the bushes that are off to the left and you, you, you always compare. So whatever you're, however you're doing it, you're going to compare to what's already there and try to get your uh, drawing in the right place. When I do a drawing for, for a landscape specifically, it's just a road map. It's just to get, get the large pieces in the right place and as we talked about when I was talking about choosing this reference photo, I'm keeping in mind where the big masses are on the page, on the canvas. Not, not looking at detail at all, just trying to get the big masses in the, the about the right place and again because this is a landscape it's not super critical if something's a little bit off and that's kind of what I like about landscapes putting in this little shed that's almost completely covered over by um, probably mostly blackberry bushes because that's what grows the most here in Oregon if things are left wild so just getting that reference in and I'm doing this whole video series in real time. I've done my past ones in double time or four time just just to get through the process in a short period of time but this one um, I did it in 15 minute parts and there are nine of them to watch so I wanted to show you in real time what the pace is of my drawing and my painting and how I use the brush just as a learning tool don't forget you have a fast forward button so you can certainly move through when you get bored. But I also want to be teaching you about color mixing so um, I've arranged the camera so that you can also see the colors that I'm mixing. So as much as anything that's what we're going to be talking about is mixing our colors and how to get to the colors we want given the standard palette that I use of uh, cool and a warm blue cool and a warm red, a cool and a warm yellow, and then I add a bright magenta, quinacridone magenta, 
and a transparent gold, which is quinacridone nicolazo gold. So you can see I take quite a while in this drawing stage. Um, I want to make sure that I get the large masses in the right place on the canvas and I'm also thinking about the painting process coming up and what things I want to emphasize and what things are important. So I'm getting to know my reference photo. And here you can see I've switched over to my number four flat brush um, to start blocking in um, the blocking in stage. We're basically done with the drawing stage and I'm happy with that. And now we're going to start what's called the blocking in stage. And in this stage your, your focus is on the value of what you're painting. In other words, the relative lightness and darkness. So you want to get the right value and I try to get pretty close to the right color but that's not my focus at this stage in the painting. My focus are, is to get the big masses in in the right value. So I'm starting with my sky and you can see I used both ultramarine blue and thalo blue and I started out with a little too much ultramarine in there and you can see it was too purpley warm. I want this is a midsummer uh, scene and I, I wanted a more more cool blue color sky color so I added more of the thalo blue and you'll see when when I add the colors you just need a tiny 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 bit of thalo blue it's a very clear transparent color and a little bit of thalo blue goes a long way so I'm just uh, filling in the sky here and um, one thing about skies that you need to think about is that the sky is always lighter towards the horizon. So you can see I just go back in with some white paint and I'm lightening up the sky at the high horizon level. Um, again with acrylic paints you have a little period of time, only a, maybe a minute or so, where you can manipulate the paint after you've put it on the canvas if you keep brushing over and over it, it will start to dry and then it will start to gum up and it, it one, it won't blend nicely and you'll just bit, get a big gummy mess. As I do the block in, I'm keeping the paint thin. I don't want a lot of texture at this level and I'm applying a lot of pressure with my brush. I'm really scrubbing that paint into the canvas because what you're trying to do is fill up all those little canvas holes so you don't get any little white dots shining through at the end of the painting if you want to completely fill up the canvas and but we don't want texture so whereas later in the painting I use a much lighter touch and a lot more paint at this point in the painting you're gonna uh, use a, a firm touch and press pretty hard um, on the canvas to get that paint into the into the canvas itself so now I'm moving on to the um, first row of background hills. So one thing to remember with hills, background hills, they're always bluer than you think. So even though you might be looking at your reference photo, your eyes are telling you that's a green mountainside, but in reality it's blue. It's much bluer than you think it's going to be because of atmospheric perspective. And what that means is there's a lot of uh, atmosphere between you and those distant mountains and the further they are away the more atmosphere there is, the more air and the air has water in it and it just adds a layer of blueness as you go back further and further. So as the mountains come towards you they get a little warmer but the ones in the far distant are going to be very blue. So what you're looking at, what I'm looking at here is that contrast between the mountain and the sky, the value difference. So I want to make sure that I, I'm nailing that. That's the most important thing. The color we can adjust later. Um, I want to get it as close as I can. That just speeds up the process of the painting. But the, but the major thing is getting the right value. So I'm happy with that. Uh, the difference between the sky and the background mountain. 
that, which is the value of it is good and the relative color is pretty close. So now I'm moving into these this row of trees on the left that's in front of that mountain. It's closer to us. So it's going to be warmer. You can see I'm adding some um, cadmium red to it, a uh, little alizarin crimson. The first uh, color I put down was too green. It had too much of a greenish tint to it, so I went bluer and added a little more red to get it more purple. And you see how I'm continually wiping this paint off? It's because I want to keep this layer thin. I don't want the paint to, to build up and be thick. So sometimes I will put another, like if I need it a little lighter, I'll put some white into it and mix it in. But if the paint gets too thick on the canvas, I'll just wipe it off with my paper towel so I can continue in the block end stage. Picking up my canvas to get the glare off of it. I'm, it's pretty difficult actually to paint on a flat surface like I'm doing so that you can see it. So I'm, I kind of struggle throughout this video with that, with the glare on the canvas and just getting the right perspective. Normally I paint on an easel, so I'm painting with the, um, with the canvas at more of a vertical angle. I'm happy with that set of trees, so now I'm moving on to my darkest point in the painting. And we talked about this before. This red tree here is going to be my focal point, so it's where you'll see the darkest darks and the lightest lights. That's one way you draw the eye to the focal point. It's also going to have some nice rich color, and um, it's going to have some red tones that are going to contrast with the green bushes that are right around it. So having complementary colors right next to each other is another way that you can draw attention to your focal point. And by complementary colors, those are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So if you look at the color wheel, green is going to be the opposite of red. So those two complementary colors are going to make that area sing. Another thing you want to do is you'll see I've put in basically three spots of this dark color. And so you kind of want to think of that as you're painting. You don't want to just put an isolated color all by itself and never repeat that anywhere else in the painting. You want to work in, in threes or fives even, but um, you don't want to isolate isolated spots of value or color. You want those to be have, have at least three, three spots on the pa painting that are the same. So after I got my darkest dark area in, I went and added some alizarin crimson to that and uh, some cadmium red and a little bit of quin gold to lighten it up just a little bit to get this reddish color of this tree which I liked. 